Hello, welcome to Taiwan News. I'm Dang Hương. Now the headlines. Eight provinces in the northeast share PAPI results in 2013. Taiwan Radio and Television Station Green produced a documentary on Linam Day and, Pri and Pri Li Dynasty. Promoting the strengths of the collective economic sector. On the 14th of April, eight provinces in the northeast held a workshop to share recent public administration and proficiency index PAPI in 2013. The workshop brought together representatives from the provinces of Hà Giang, Cao Bằng, Bắc Cạn, Tuyên Quang, Lạng Sơn, Quảng Ninh, Bắc Giang, and Thái Nguyên. The chairman of Thái Nguyên Provincial People's Committee, Dương Ngọc Long, attended the meeting. The Provincial Public Administration and Proficiency Index PAPI in 2013 was surveyed by gathering opinions of nearly 40,000 people by working provinces of all administration units in all levels in the localities based on six primary content groups with 22 indexes and 92 indicators. It's proven that the administration affairs in many localities have significantly been improved through the evaluation of the said indicators, thereby motivating social economic development. For the Northeast region, although there have been improvements in the scores of the six primary content groups, not all organizations across the provinces experience the same. Compared to seven other provinces in the region, Taiwan province had three of six primary content groups with the highest score and increased 10 percent compared to 2012, where transparency and accountability, respectively, are at the top. Thus, Taiwan province led the first of the eight provinces in the northeast region. However, Taiwan province had the lowest score in the administrative procedures and the provision of public services. The combined analysis of the component indicators will be the basis for Taiwan to reform its service quality. Speaking at the workshop, the chairman outlined the main features of the PAPI implementation of the province and also showed the determination to improve its PAPI in the future. On April the 14th, Chairman of the Taiwan People's Committee, Zing Ngoc Long, presided a meeting to find solutions to prevent problems related to infrastructure to ensure the production schedule of SEMV at Samsung High Tech Complex in Yen Bing Industrial Zone. The six issues that Samsung Electromechanics Limited Liability Company bared at the meeting include fraud infrastructure obstacles and two security issues. Specifically, the company proposed to clear the barrier on connecting the road to the northern SEMV with the highway as the entrance was closed last March the 18th because Yinbing Investment and Development Johnstock Company did not meet the conditions required that delayed in the construction schedule. SEMV also proposed that the roads to the west and the north side of the company need to be finished to avoid traffic congestion. In addition, the difference in water bill of more than 2,900,000 Vietnam dongs per square meter between SEMV and Samsung Electronics Company should also be adjusted to the same price. Security and order at the worksite is also a problem that should be cared about. During the meeting, the functional departments and local organizations gave answers and provided directions and solutions to every problem aired by Samsung Electromechanics Limited Liability Company. Concluding the meeting, the chairman, Zing Ngoc Long, required the relevant departments and local organizations to quickly solve the problems at hand to complete the infrastructure works and ensure the security conditions for Samsung Electromechanics Limited Liability Company. Fifteen centuries ago, after gaining the throne, Li Nam Day founded Vạn Xuân and was made the first king of Vietnam, opening a long-term independence and sovereignty of the nation. His hometown was in Cổ Phạm Village, the Phong Commune for Yen District, Thái Nguyên Province. Today, Thái Nguyên Radio and Television Station, with the support of historians for Yen District and business sector who dedicated to Thái Nguyên, officially started filming the historical documentary about Lý Nam Đế King and Pri Lý Dynasty. 
as planned, the historical documentary about King Li Namde and Pre Li Dynasty consists of six episodes. Each episode will reflect an overview of the historical context of North Vietnam and the origin of Li Bi uprising. Episode 2 will introduce the main events of the uprising, particularly the role of Li Bi uprising. Episode 3 will focus on the introduction of the birth of Van Xuân government and the historical value of asserting national sovereignty. Episode 4 will concentrate on the achievements of Li Bi who first recognized the geographical location of Hanoi today. Episode 5 will focus on confirming the historical values of the way to fight our Libby's homeland and the efforts of Santis, the leaders of Fu Yin district, as well as the support of the people of Fu Yin. While Episode 6 will introduce Fu Yin and its people in the course of history. The film is expected to be completed in the second quarter of 2014. It aims to remind the public of the spirit of heroic struggle resilience and continuity of our people for thousands of years under the northern enemy's domination and the fight for the autonomy, and lessons about national consciousness, the art of fighting against the invaders. Realizing that vocational training for rural laborers is a useful measure to level up the progress of industrialization and modernization in the province, the Vocational Training Center of Taiwan City did a survey and eventually collaborated with enterprises to enroll trainees and create jobs for them. Implementing the plan of vocational training in 2013, the Vocational Training Center of Taiwan City trained 630 laborers, 20% of them are the poor and ethnic minorities. The main jobs include industrial sewing, planting and processing mushroom, planting tree trees. After being trained, 50% of the trainees can find suitable jobs. Upholding the achievements of 2013 in this year, 2014, the Vocational Training Center of Taiwan City continuously expands training skill and improves training quality, striving to supply vocational training to more than 670 laborers. To date, the center has collaborated with Sinhan Garment Export JSC and TNG Investment Trading JSC to open two training classes of industrial sewing for 70 trainees. Besides, the center has opened some other classes including electric welding, creating shapes and looking after ornamental plants using veterinary drugs, planting safe vegetables, etc. to timely meet the demand of local laborers. Taiwan Province is proud for being the first two established cooperatives. As time goes by, many local cooperatives have become more and more active with their production activities that greatly contributed to the development of the cooperatives movement nationwide. During the last years, in spite of difficult economic situation, the cooperatives have clearly shown the advantages of collective economy through its achievements. In Taiwan, many corporates have been strengthened and expanded their production for development and labor extraction, switched their economic structures, and participated in the national target program of building new rural areas. Being aware of the importance of agricultural cooperatives in supporting local farmers with reasonable price services, in 2011, Nha Long Sep Vegetable Cooperative, Phu Bing District, were established. The safe vegetable production procedure of 30 households have met Viet Gap standards, making products consumption safer and faster than before. Tiêu chuẩn Viet Gap thì mình rau của mình đạt cái thương hiệu của mình nó có rồi nhưng mà mình. Our products meet Viet Gap standards, but haven't been able to find markets for the output products. In the coming time, we will be seeking markets for our products. In fact, only by recognizing the benefits of joining in a cooperative. Do the members find the cooperating activities necessary? Let's take the case of Phan Mei Forestry Products Processing and Trading Surface Cooperative as a typical example. 
Standing in the verge of bankruptcy due to shortage of funds in 2009, the corporate decided to switch to forestry products processing and civil construction by mobilizing financial resources from corporate members and the National Target Program for Job Solution. Thanks to the ability to promote internal strength, the prestige of the corporate was gradually recognized and thus more and more customers patronized the corporate. The corporate could have been broken in 2009 if not for the corporation and union support. As the corporate changed the production mode, the corporate's alliance created favorable conditions for us to borrow funds which had been a premises for our infrastructure construction. In 2003, Taiwan province had 187 cooperating groups and 21 newly established cooperatives. Today, the total number of cooperating groups has reached 685 and 343 for new cooperatives with over 40,000 members and laborers. The total capital of cooperatives reached 2,600 billion Vietnam dong, making an increase of 10.2 percent compared to 2013. The amount of payment to the state budget reached 40 billion Vietnam dong. With the determination and efforts from Cooperative Management Board and members, this collective economic area is expected to make an uninterrupted development to contribute to the socio-economic development costs in Taiwan in particular and the whole nation in general. That ends our program today. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye for now and see you next time.